So do we submit what we have? Or? Yes, submit what you have. Okay. So as far as getting more practice for this class, um, there's this great website called CodingBat.com, which has exercises for both Java and for Python. Um, the warm-up problems are pretty good here uh, for what you guys know. But then we and, want, and we'll be able to get into the str uh, string problems, the basic string problems first. Oh, sorry, in a bit. So, um, so right now we 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 I'm going to we need to learn more about for loops and methods. Um, also note that basically according to my schedule, I've got we've got our first exam coming up, uh, which is that. Let's see. I think this was. Yeah. So I think that we have. Um, nope. That's for the Python class. So our first exam is get. I had that tentatively scheduled for next Thursday. Um, I will be posting the practice exam online in, you know, basically within the hour once once I stop the lecture and start we start doing lab stuff. But I've got a practice exam, um, which I'll show you guys. Um, and that's a very good representation of the actual exam. But for getting practice, um, let me go go show the syllabus for right now, or the schedule on the syllabus. So uh, teaching. Intro schedule, right? We're about we covered most of this stuff. Meth we didn't cover meth uh, primitives versus objects, but we did cover for loops. Haven't covered while loops, so we've swapped around of things a bit based on what I feel like gets you more understanding of the material. Um. So instead, what we're gonna so today I'm gonna focus on basically kind of just again doing a, another pass of the material. Um, so let's just talk about what it means to write a class because I haven't really gotten into that I've been saying this is magic go and do this right go and do that this is magic go and do this say uh, Create public class and then do public stack void main right and do all that stuff. Well today. I'm going to um, Elucidate um, Basically manners a bit now that we actually have some understanding of the material. Okay, so When you write a program or a class in Java, there are essentially three types of programs that you write, okay? There are three types of programs that you can write. The first one is a program, which is what we have been writing, right? We've been writing programs this entire time. And all your assignments are essentially going to be programs for the most part, okay? In other words, there's things with a main method that you that have public stack void main, and you run that public stack void main, and it does something, right? That's the first type of program. The second type of program is what we call a module, which we'll be talking about today. And a module is just a collection of methods that you can use. They're a collection of of, of code that, that somebody else has written for you that you can use pretty easy, easily. Okay. And the third thing is a um and the third type of of uh, program that we can write in Java is called a class. Okay? And a class is basically a new data type, right? So ints, doubles, strings, a new data type. Just submit what you have. Let me, I'm, I'm worried about something else. So now the, um, the, um, so, um, let's give an example of like a module that exists. So, um, very common module that we have to use. So public, so public, so public stack void main. Okay. So we've got our main class here. And typically, if I want to do uh, uh, some mathematical stuff, it ends up being a bit of, you know, it, it ends up being, you know, some mathematical stuff like uh, doing. Uh, Multiplication is not that hard. System dial dot print line, right? If I want to add two numbers, right? A and B. Int x, or sorry, int a is equal to five. Int b is equal to seven. A plus b, print that out. That's not hard at all, right? Right. Adding two numbers is just something that's pretty immediately done. Okay. Uh, similarly, okay, we can do like, uh, 
a squared pretty easily, which is a times b, right? That's not, oh, sorry, um, a squared, which is a times a, my bad. I just got ahead of myself on that, okay? 25, right? That's not too hard either. Um, now, but more complicated math stuff like doing the exponent. Like if I wanted to raise a to the b power, we could do that as, we can do that, right? We could just do a times a uh, times a times a times, you know, seven. Now that's, that's silly. Why don't we just do it, um, why don't we just do, create a, a number for that, int exponent is equal to one, and just multiply a bunch of stuff together. Use a loop to do it. So for int, we just need to multiply a together b number of times, right? That's what an exponent is. Int i is equal to zero. i is less than, uh, i is less than b, i plus plus. And what we'll do is that I, um, and I'm using, I set exponent's value to one because it's the identity operator. So whatever I multiply it against, sorry, it's the identity, um, it, a mul for multiplication. So whatever I multiply, uh, into exponent, it will be, um, fine. Uh, so let's see, exponent times equals a. So I'll multiply it once, it's 5, then 25, then 125, and so on and so forth. So, okay, I can do exponents. It's annoying to have to do that, right? So this is 5 to the 7th power, I believe. <clears throat> it's annoying to have to do that, but I can do it. All right, um, so here's a question. So now here's a question without an answer, though, without an easy one. Uh, what if I wanted to raise, what if I had double C is equal to 3.5, okay? And I wanted to calculate A raised to the Cth power, which is 5 to the 3.5 power, right? Well, that's a pain in the butt, right? Um, I mean, and if I think about it and digest it a bit, I'm like, okay, what can I do? That's a times a times a times a to the one half power, which is the square root of a, right? Well, okay, so I can do the a times a times a, but what the heck is the square? How do I calculate the square root of a? Has, have you ever like had to actually calculate the square root of a number just like, you know, that wasn't a solid number? Like, you can calculate the square root of 100 pretty well, but how the heck do you go about calculating the square root of 10 or 5? And the answer is, of course, that you, you just want to throw up you throw up your hands and you use something called Newton's method, but that's a complicated and actually involves a bit of calculus. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to say, no, computer, do it for us, Look, right? So those kind of things are non-trivial. And for those not kind of non-trivial things, uh, we have the math module that's provided by Java. Uh, by Java. So right, we've been using so we've been interacting with the classes already like scanner is a class that we use we do scanner scanner is equal to a new scanner if I want to read stuff in right and that's saying that somebody wrote a, a Java program called scanner okay and this is me using it to do to read from system dot in okay now math we don't use like that like and that makes sense because I have one maybe one scanner that reads from system dot in maybe have another scanner that reads from a file like this scanner uh, scanner file reader is equal and I'll show you guys, and when we get to file reading of course we do this again new uh, new scanner new file which is another class my file .txt right and that has to be imported as well import the class whatever and that gives me an error because we have to talk about try catch exceptions, which I'm not even going to uh, talk about now. But I can use one scanner to read a file and another scanner to read from system.in, right? I can have multiple scanners juggling around, right? Now, to use math, we don't use it the same way. We use modules we use in a different way, which is actually a lot easier. Um, math, which is from – doesn't need to be imported. Um, but, what, but it makes sense that you can't do this. Math M 
is equal to new math. That doesn't make sense, right? It's a module. Uh, there's no math. What, what would a math object even be? What would you do with it? You're not going to do anything with it, okay? So math is just used like system.println, okay? So if I wanted to calculate something like... Uh, if I wanted to calculate something like uh, a to the seat power, I'd do it like this. I'd use the math library, starts with capital M, right? Class names and modules start with a capital letter. Everything else is a lowercase letter. Okay, Cla math dot, and then it's got all these things. It's got absolute values. And these are methods that take in a variable, and we talked about that a bit last time. Right, they take, so absolute value can take in an integer or a long or a float or a double. A float's just simply a smaller double. Okay. Um, let's see. Math dot pow. Double A double B. Five. Three. So we want A to B. And yeah, it, A isn't a double, but we'll, it will be converted to a double, so that's fine. So this is A to the 3.5 power. Well, sorry, that's, sorry, that's A 5 to the 7th power. This is 5 to 3.5 right over here. Okay. Similarly, there's a square root function that math provides. So let's go ahead and write our own module that does something and see how to use it. Okay. So a module is fairly straightforward. Um, we'll get modules are distinguished by the fact that they will not have name in them. Okay. And we're rarely going to you're rarely going to write a module, but you can think of like if you need a bunch of common functions that you're going to use from homework to homework, that's what you would use a module for. Right, just a basically a library here, and to use them, and to use them, you either ha they either have to be in the same package. Now, in other words, they have to be in the same folder as one another. So if you don't have a package on your on your program, that's fine. Then they're going to be it, so long as they're in the same project, that's fine. But um, they just have to be able to see each other. So they can either they either see each other by uh, sorry the files have to see each other, and they have to. See and the way a file will see a module is if they're in the same program or if you import it. So if they're in the same folder or you import it. Um, we've seen how to do imports. So I'm just going to write this one because it's in the same folder, right? This is in my methods folder. Okay. So let's do public static void math facts. Okay. Which is that what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm going to call it actually print math facts, and this is fairly straightforward. Uh, given a double, I'm going to print math facts about it. Very very kind of innocuous kind of program. Okay, so sout. Um, so for pass d, the uh, square root of D is, and then we'll do a, uh, a space, and then print out math dot square root of D. Now you don't need to import math because it's it's just like system; it's very commonly used, so so it's already automatically available in every program that you write. So unlike in Python, where you do have to import math, so um, the cube root of d is math dot let's see how do we do the uh, root let's see can we do that hmm how do we do the cube root of a something prop well I'll just use math dot pal okay again and I'll say d to raise to the one third power so 1.0 divided by 3.0. Why 1 divided by 1.0 divided by 3.0 as opposed to 1 divided by 3? Well, 1 divided by z 3 would yield 0, which would be converted to 0.0, .0 which would raise d to the 0th power, which would give me 1. Um, so the cosine of d is... And that's fairly straightforward. Math dot cosine of and takes in d, right? So I'm not going to use this 
in May. And I've got other methods here, method stubs here that will remind me of what I'm doing. And this again is just a void method, which I'll explain what me that means in just a couple seconds. But let's go ahead back to our let's do math function. I'm going to comment out what we currently have there. And I'll just simply do, uh, so, and what I do to use, to use math facts is now I type the name of the program I wrote, my module, which is the name of my mo the module I just wrote, dot, and then I, to call the method I, I wrote, I call print math facts, right? See how that works just like I did math dot? Well, I just wrote something that doesn't have a main in it, and all, you know, all it has is a bunch of stack methods, so I call my module dot print math facts, and I'm going to put in 5.0. And so the square root of d is 2.2, the cube root of, of d is 1.7, and the cosine of d is 0.2836, you know, and so on and so forth. So all, so all I did was just call, call another, so I have my main going on in here, and I'm just calling another thing I wrote. And the reason they're able to do that is because let's do math can see my module, because they're in the same folder, right? Over here, you can see they're in the same folder. <coughs> mm -hmm. All right, and to access it, I just typed in the class name, which was my module, or the, rather the module name, and use that. So, um, let's go ahead and um, talk about. Let's see. So let's go ahead and look at. Um, and let's write enough. Let's to get some more practice by uh, writing for loops by writing a uh, small program over here. Sorry, a small function over here called print range. Uh, so this is going to be called print range, and what I want it to do is print all numbers from a to b, excluding sorry, you know, including a excluding, sorry, let's go ahead and include, yeah, including A, excluding B, all numbers should be printed on the same line and separated by commas. So how are we going to do this one? Well, obviously, a for a loop, right? We're familiar with the whole, uh, the whole, um, you know, including a, excluding b format, right? When we write a for a loop, for int a, sorry, for int i is equal to a, so we're going to start at a, right? Int, and so while a is, sorry, well i is less than b, right? I plus plus, and if we just do system out the print line, I, we can test it. So let's go to again to let's do math back to over here, and call it my module dot uh, print range. Let's print the range uh, two to ten. Okay, so that prints two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. Everybody see why it does that? It passes 2 in here and 9 in here. I starts at 2. It prints out 2. Then it increments to 3. Prints out 3. Increments to 4. Prints out 4. Increments to 5. Prints out 5. Increments to 5. Prints out 6. Sorry. Print, sorry. Increments to 5. Prints out 5. Increments to 6. Prints out 6. Increments to 7. Prints out 7. And so on and so forth until it gets to 10. And it's like, oh, 10 is, less, is not less than 10. So false. But I said I wanted to print them all on the same line. Okay. So how do I print them all on the same line? And I don't use print line. What do I use instead? Print. Okay. Of course, if I do it like this now, um, then it prints out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So all one word. So let's go ahead and separate them. Two, three. Oh, but I want them separated by commas, right? Okay, so run this. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then what? We've got a comma. Why is it, why do we have a comma here? This is this isn't a trick question, by the way. Um, we have a comma because you didn't specify what it was we were doing. Because the comma is in the uh, right. quotation. Right, because because we told it to print it out is essentially it. Every we say let's print in every out every number from two to nine. Uh, sorry, from two to ten, excluding ten, and every number should be separated by uh, should have a comma following. So this is what we call a fence posting problem, which is to say that basically suppose you're trying to lay down a fence post, okay? Um, and what that means is that essentially that suppose you're laying down fence, uh, and I'm going to draw some really bad ASCII fence over here, okay? Right? Suppose I want to draw a I, I want to lay down like three sections of fence, right? That means I put a fence post here. And then I have some fencing, my first section of fencing. Then I have a fence post here. Then I have another section of fencing, another fence post, and then another. And so I have three sections of fence over here. But how many fence posts do I have? Um, three, um, one. I have four fence posts, four the vertical bars being the fence posts and the equal sign being the fencing. Or I can just do this. Right, That makes sense that this is fencing over here. right? So I need, and this, so how does this compare to our problem? Well, for this problem, uh, essentially our numbers are the, fence, are, are the fence posts and our commas are the fencing. In the sense that basically we need one more, com we need one less comma than we do um, a fence post. So there's, so there's a couple ways around this. There's a couple of different hacks we can use essentially. Suggestions uh, as to any hacks? Well, we can kind of... Re so, I'll give you guys a hint. What if we did... Um, so here's one hack. It's an un unintuitive one. But what if we did this? Okay. Now... So now we've got comma two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Now we've got a leading comma. How can we possibly so what can we what what could we change now? Any aspect of this, by the way, is up for grabs for changing this. How can we how can we get rid of that leading comma now? Sorry? Use an if statement? Like how so? Well, we, mm, I, I kind of see what you're getting at. Yeah? Hmm. I'm not sure if you're... I think you're thinking of something else. What was your suggestion? So we need an if statement, and we need to tell the if statement um, that if... This is the first iteration. Okay. Um, System.out.println. If, if i is equal to a. So you're saying if i is e so that's what you're probably getting at as well, right? Okay. If i is equal to a, sout, so uh, s out, um, oh, that's interesting. s out, uh, uh, I and then, else. and then else print out this. Yep. Okay. Um, that's a solution. It is a solution. There's there's many solutions. No one better than or worse than the other. But it but this is what we call a fence posting problem, and it happens basically a lot when you're dealing with loop, with with uh, four I loops. So let's go ahead and take a look at another possible solution. Okay, so I'm going to comment it out. Um, so let's go back to our original statement. Can we, let's try now solving it by not adding any if statements to it. And instead, just adding, just 
uh, changing these parameters and maybe adding another print line somewhere else. So last number now is what's got the extra comma. So what could we do? Well, we could print everything. Yep. All right. So another thing we could do here is, all right, so we could make it so it <coughs> doesn't run the final iteration, and then we exit the for loop and have it print out system.outprint time. Yep. Something like, yeah. But print one less, right? Print everything one through eight first, right? And then we have the comma, and then output. Then out. Then you're saying output the last number separately. Mm -hmm. Well, we we just want to print B there at that point. And yeah, that's a per another perfectly valid solution. Either printing A first. Well, not B, but uh, B minus one. So this is a fence posting problem. It it exists. It is annoying sometimes. You don't encounter it too much, but this is the reason why, and. It's handleable, handleable. All right, but here again, we weren't running any of these programs in my module. My module doesn't have string. Every time I was hitting the run button, it was running let's do math, which is where we were kept calling this from. All right, so um, one thing. So let's go back to this one. So we're printing out the math. The square root of d is 2.23606, right? It's doing so. It's we're printing out stuff. Uh, and math dot square root is giving back information, right? This is being converted. This math dot square root over here, this is being converted into a number, right? Right. All the methods, all the print, all these methods I've written so far that do um, all these static void methods that I've written, they don't get converted into information. They just do something. They print something out, right? So what we want to do now. Is print instead instead of printing something, let's get a value out, right? Here, math dot square root is uh, basically being turned into a value. It's part of expression, right? We could add it to something. So square root of d plus one. So we can add we so we could add a one over here to the square root of d right and do some math with that it's not just being converted into a string <clears throat> right so instead of saying 2.2 is now 3.2 right so we're getting a value converted in into some into something sorry so sorry so this is providing us a value right we put in a value we put in d it gives us a value back for math.pal we give it uh, a base and an exponent and it gives us a value back, right? We give math.cosine a value, and it's giving us a value back. Um, in, in programming parlance, this is called returning a value, OK? Um, so let's go ahead and write the most basic like return statement I can, uh, I can for you guys. Sorry, the most basic uh, value method, as it's called, as opposed to a return, uh, as opposed to a void method. So public static. Now rather than writing void here, I'm going to write int. Give me one int. Uh, um, and it's not going to take in any parameters. I can take in a parameter here. But this is a fairly straightforward method. All it does is it gives you a one back when it's called. OK? So a return statement is pretty awesome. Um, once you hit a return statement in a in a method, the the, pro, the basically the method stops running and just ends and it hands you back. Essentially, think of your methods like uh, black boxes, right? In which you can pass parameters, right? Here's your method, right? And those can be in a module or they can be something you write and you pass them parameters, right? You can pass them one parameter, you can pass them two, you can pass them three. In fact, you can pass them as many as as you can t as as so long, if it specifies 100 parameters, then you got to pass it 100 parameters, right? Um, return statements, you're only ever going to ever return one value out of, out of it. It's only ever going to return one value. So many inputs, one output. 
Now, if you need to return more, there's ways to cheat that around that by like returning a, something that has multiple values inside of it, like a string has multiple characters inside of it. But for the most part, but we only ever re really return one value. So give me one gives you one back. So um, let's go ahead and go to the let's do math back to let's do math. So system dot out dot. So let's go ahead and say x is equal. So let's create an int x. X is equal to uh, five plus um, my module dot give me one, right? So how does this work? Well, int x gets the oh, and then of course just to show that we are doing something. System out the print line x, right? We'll print out the value. So int x is equal to five plus my module dot give me one. Okay? Five, right, plus, and then we've got this thing over here. Well, first off, how does it know what to do with this? Well, if we go over back to here, this over here where we have an int instead of a void, lets the program lets Java know that this method, give me one. When it gets put into an expression, it's going to re it's going to return an int. Okay, it doesn't know what the value is, even though it's pretty easy to see what the value is. It doesn't know what that int will be, but it knows that when it evaluates this, it's going to return an int. So the, the so it can do the plus operation. So five plus. So then it executes the code in here. Give me one. Return one feeds a one back over here, so it becomes five plus one. Make sense to everybody? So oh. Um, right. Why does it say 96? Because of course we were printing everything here. So let's go over. Sorry. Let me go to print range. Let me put a print line over here. Sorry. And you were saying? So the int x one equals five. So five plus my module give me one. Five plus my module give me one. My module give me one is the return. Is what you call the return value. It, it provides a value back. It returns one. So that's, this is, that's not just the name. That's a specific command. That I wrote, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Write the, where did you write it? In oh, my module. Yeah, you wrote it there. In my module. And you, said, and you said that, and you said so that public, so that give me one is an, a public static integer? It's a, give me one is a method. That is, it is a public method. It is a static method. Okay, two words we don't know the meaning yet of, but the int means it returns an integer. So public, static. So this is what we call the access modifier, meaning whoever can see, meaning who can see it. Um, now methods inside of, um, actually I, I feel no reason why I can't explain this right now. Public, I need it to be public in order for my other, pro, in, other for, in, in order for other methods to see it, okay? If it's not public, then let's do math can't use it, right? So guess what if, What I would put if I didn't want my, let's do math to use, give me one. Private. So if I said private here instead, let's go to go to let's do, let's do math. It gives me an error. It so, says you can't use it. So public stack is just, um, it's just the thing that allows. Uh, yep. Um, so, um. Okay, so yeah, pub public means oh, the public means that we're allowed to use it. The static means, and I'm gonna lie here. Okay, this is a lie. This is wrong, but it makes sense right now. It's close enough to the truth, right? Why can't you okay. I'm, so, you because you can't handle the truth. Okay. So. Okay, so the stat. Well, because it because it's accurate, right? What's the value of pi? 3.14. No. For the most part. For the most part. 3.14159? No, it's not even that. It's 3.14159 and then a bunch of other digits. It's 3.14, though, is accurate enough right for most uses. And that's exactly what I'm saying when I'm lying to you. Oh. So uh, 3.14. So static means that it's going to be used as part of a module. That's a lie, but for right now, you can say it mean that you can kind of look at it and say it's going to be used as a module. By by being static, it means it doesn't belong to any mem any particular member of the class. It can be used um, in a static context, meaning that you don't need uh, uh, to create a uh, a object to use it. 
right? But we don't know real know too much about objects in order to understand it. That just means that we can call it in this manner. We can use it. We can use this method by going my mo module that give me one. Static allows you to use it in as my module that give me one. If we didn't have static, okay. So if we didn't have static, right, and things are either static, have static, or they don't have static, then we wouldn't be able to use it like this. Okay, static allows us to use it like this. That's the whole. That's not the whole of the story, but it's close enough. Okay. Int means it returns an integer. So now we know that void, by the way, means that it doesn't return anything. Okay, a void doesn't return anything. Okay, and then so it's public, static, return type, the name of the method, and then any arguments that go in there. So let's go ahead and look at main for a second. That's a method. It's a specific method that your program looks to start a program at. Public, static, void, meaning public, meaning that program can find it. Static, meaning you don't, you can use it just immediately. Um, void, meaning that main met won't return anything. Its name is main. And then it takes in string with these weird things over here, args. And all this means is that it takes in an array of strings, which is the same as saying it takes in a lot of strings, as opposed to just one string. So you can provide main with a bunch of strings. Now you rarely do that, but you can. So All right. Return one is what it's going to give you back. Right? A one. So, so now. It's going to give you back the value of your. Mm -hmm. So now let's do, write another basic mathematical method. Public static. Uh, int. Where is the Double. return value in the, in the output? Where it says the output, did you run it to get the current output? It just gives me my module that give me one. This gets converted into one. So my mod, so public so stack double. You can put my module give you ten. Sorry. So you can. I could I could create a give me two, but there's public stack double. Um, and I'm gonna call it double. I'm gonna call this public stack int double this, okay? Which is going to take an int in an int x, and any guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna return twice x, right? going to double the value of x. Return um, return 2 times x. Okay. So let's go ahead and do, um, so x is 6 right now. So x is equal to uh, double this x. Oh, I have to call, I have to say my module because it's inside of my module. My module that double this. Okay. Now you can put methods and other methods in your program, right? You've been doing that before, but I wanted to show you what a module was. So, right, there was nothing stopping me from putting double this inside of let's do math. And in that case, I wouldn't have to write the my module not double this. Okay. Okay, sound x. So this is going to return 12. Okay? Okay? Actually, int, let's go with int y, and we're going to print out y. So, right, x's value was 6. Then we said double this x, and we pat, and we stored it, in, and we stored the result in y, right? 12. Okay? <laughs> So and then we return 12. Okay. So this is going to get into a bit of a subtlety here, right? So we've got something going in, we've got going out. Now the question is, what's going in and what's going out? So we passed in an X. Now what's important to remember is the following words. Java is a pass-by copy language. Okay? This means that when you pass things as a parameter, things get copied. Now as I'll point out with strings, because strings are objects and they get handled a bit differently, what, get co uh, what's, what gets copied is either a value, if it's a primitive, or a memory location, if it's n an object. And I'll show you how that works in a second. So let's go ahead and see. So right now we're just going to deal with primitives. So 5 plus 1 is get stored in x. Print out 6. 
my module dot double this, okay? So we pass five. So let's go ahead and do this. Sout. So I'm gonna print out um, x plus space plus y. So we pass six into this, right? And so we're passing in six. <coughs> so the question is, what is uh, x's value after we run this? When we print out x, what is x's value going to be? Any question? Anyone? 20? 12? Why would it be 12? Because it's just going to be 6. It's only going to be 6. Because we pass it in here, right? Then we multiply it by, and then we return x times 2, which is a new value, right? So we store that in y. All right, so let me change up the code here a bit. And it's very important that, that if your instincts are wrong about this, that they get immediately corrected, okay? x is equal to x times 2, return x, okay? And remember what I said. Java is pass by copy. So now the question is, I say, I run this code. What is x's gonna value going to be? It's still 6 because Java is a pass by copy language. That means that we take the value of x, make a copy of it, okay, and pass it into here. Now the reason for this is because can you imagine how confusing it would be to remember any changes that happen in random methods, right? Can you imagine just how confusing that would be to remember the changes that happen to something in another method, right? So we pass in six and we copy that value over into, into the method, okay? So, we, so we're dealing with a copy of x. Now never mind that this is called x over here and this is called x over here, right? They're, that it's like, you know, it's like when you have a math function and you have an f of x in one place and if for one problem, you have an f and x in another problem. That's exactly what's going on over here. You have different f of x's, right? They're different problems. Okay? So we're copying a value over here. We're doing a calculation some in another program, in basically another subprogram, and we're getting a value out. So we're getting a copy of, of it. Okay? And that's how primitives work. So... Okay, right? Um, so methods pass by copy. So here, let's go ahead and see this one. Let's go ahead and write public stack methods pass by copy. Int x, int y, int z, okay? And actually, I'm going to make this a void method just to get the point across, okay? Void, okay? <clears throat> x is equal to. So I'm just going to write gibberish here. Don't bother. <clears throat> Don't worry about having to follow along here. X is plus x plus equals uh, z y minus minus um, y is equal to y uh, plus 200 minus sorry divided by z. Uh, x is equal to sorry and z is equal to x plus 1, right? So I'm doing all these operations, and then maybe... Uh, so I've got all these operations that are going on, okay? And they're all crazy and stuff. Okay, whatever. I'm going to pass... Now I'm going to do... Um, so now I've got an int x, an int y. Let's make an int z is equal to one, one, 157, right? So I'm going to call my module dot... Uh, Methods pass by copy, and I'm going to pass it in z, y, x. No, sorry, z, y, and x. Okay? System dot that print line. x plus y plus z. So what's... Okay, x plus y plus z. <coughs> so 
So the question here is, um, what's the output? Oh, sorry. What is x plus? What is x, y, and z going to be? Right. We pass it into this crazy method. How in the world am I supposed to figure out what what's going to be? Especially since it involves a 147. Any suggestions what it's going to be? It's actually a trick question here. This one's a trick question. It's 6, 12, 157. Why? Because methods pass by copy. All the changes that happen to x, y, and z occur to this copy of x, y, and z. Right? Over here, the original x, y, and z is unaffected. The only reason y ever gets affected by, by double this is because we're taking the value that gets returned and storing it in y. That makes sense to everybody? So whatever we do to a variable, uh, whatever we do to um, our primitives in another method, it's going to be unaffected. Um, and conveniently, strings kind of work the same way because they're immutable objects. They can't be changed. You can only create new strings. So uh, that's kind of useful for right now. Once we start working with arrays, you'll see that how the whole pass by reference thing starts passing by copy, and the copy is a reference. That kind of comes into play. But for right now, just remember that everything creates a copy. But let's go ahead and just talk about this for a second. Uh, objects copy by reference, copy references. So I copy reference. String word. Sorry, a string text. Okay. Return uh, text on subs. Um, Text is equal to text dot substring zero ten return text. Okay. So here I'll do something else where I've got a string lots of text, and I'm just going to set it equal to just pretend this is like a giant book or something guys okay everybody get everybody understand just pretend this is like a giant book or something right it's obviously not that short it's obviously a bit short but you know but we're gonna pretend that it's a giant book or something so lots of text so we're gonna use system dot the print line uh, my Let's see, my module dot uh, objects pass by reference, copy reference. Okay, and we'll pass in lots of text. Okay. So, so what this does is that this passes in um, lots of text, right? Loads and loads and loads of text, right? Now, this text could be ginormous. It could be like a string that basically contains like billions upon billions of email addresses or something like that, okay? Now, we don't know how big a string is going to be. Ints, we know how big they are going to be. So copying over ints, that's perfectly fine. Instead, and we, again, we'll go into this in more detail later. When we copy over, a when, we, when we work with objects like strings, anything that's not primitive, we copy over the memory location of that string. In other words, we copy over where to find it in our memory. We copy over a reference. This is something that Java does for us automatically, and it's one of the reasons why some professors really like Java, because in C, you have to manipulate those things manually. This is also the way other popular programming languages like Python work, where they just copy the reference over. So, but, so we're still dealing with this, so it's still the same string that we were, that's, that stored, so lots of text and text are actually the same string. But strings, but we don't really have to worry about that too much here because strings are what we call an immutable type. You can't actually change a string. Anytime you do something to a string, like you plus equal a string and concatenate it with itself, well, you're creating a new string. So you didn't actually change it. You just replaced it. Similarly, substring doesn't actually... Wait, wait. If, you, if, if, if the text is returned mm -hmm. and the text equals the text substring zero, <coughs> Why don't we see zero ten down there at the bottom? We just see, we see just pretend. Uh, 
So we like, see the first ten. Text equals. Text that sub. Oh, it's the zero ten the first ten place. Yeah. Zero through ten place. Yeah. I'm sorry, may I may have to. Wow. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Text is equal to text.substring. Um, so here we got, so here we're just passing, we're getting a string back and we're printing it out. Okay. So that works out. For, so it's the same string, and when we do the substring operation, it returns a new substring. So it returns a new string, it's creating a new string. So for the things you have to work with, you're going to see that it really doesn't matter too much. I'm going to create a scanner, though, to illustrate my point. Um, actually, I'll leave that for another time. Okay. So we've got ourselves our main methods, and now we can make methods that return things. Okay. So let's write a method um, that will that will a good practice method for using a for loop. Public static string every other character. Okay. Now this string... Well, so this is a this is going to take in a string. So the objective for this problem is that we take in a string, and what we're going to do is we're going to compose this. We're going to return a string that's made up of every other character in the string. Okay. So first step first, though, I want to work on um, an easier problem. Okay. Uh, public static uh, string. Sorry, public static void. Let's just just use this as a reference. Uh, print every car. Notice that my, all my void methods that I've written, by the way, I've always put a print by them. This is because you never print in a in in. Uh, you should probably never, unless you're debugging, you should never print in a return statement, it, like in a in a value that returns. There's just no need for it, right? In void method, it makes sense that you want to print stuff, right? Because otherwise, it's not really going to do anything. So print every every character. So string s. So how do we print every character of a string? Well, the um, the smart Alex among you might say, oh, you just print the string, right? <laughs> so that would certainly print out every character in the string. But let's say I wanted to print out every string line by line, OK? One character each line. Yeah? Let's just place it. So well, there's no need to do a, a substring operation. We can print every character. I, I'm going to show you guys a method that we're going to Okay, so strings are, are the third type of thing, which is a class, meaning they're a data type, and they can also do a lot of actions. So let's do a for, so what we can do is that we can actually write a for loop that iterates over every single character in the string. For int i is equal to zero, i is less than s dot length. All right, i, so first, before I do anything, let's see what all the values of I R. Okay, uh, south I. Right. So let's do my module dot um, print every other character. Or not print every other character. Um, you know, print every character. Yeah. So. Print every character. So let's print out um, hello in all caps. Okay. So right now we're going to run it and it says, what are the values for i? It prints out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Why does it do that? Well, s.length, which remember, s is hello here. H E L L O, right? It has, it has, what is its length? What is the length? Four characters is hello. Four characters. How many characters? Five. It's five characters, right? Five characters. And its indices are, well, h is at index one, right? Sorry, h is at index zero, so it's one zero one two three four, uh, is that? So actually, with the it fits. So this kind of statement, four into i is equal to zero. i is less than s dot length. This fits perfectly into the for loop, right? Which kind of gives you an indication of why we do this whole starting at zero inclusive exclusive deal, right? It iterate it makes it really easy to write loops over strings, and also it will make it very easy to write loops over uh, over char over um, arrays later. So int i is equal to zero. 
Um, S dot, so I is less than S dot length, so it's you get value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we can get the individual characters of this by, by using S dot car at. And then if you do car at index, sorry, and then if you provide an index, it'll print it out. So we run this now, and it prints out H E. It prints out the character at zero, then the character at one, then the character at two, then the character at three, then the character at four. So now using this, so wait, you put so four in car. You, hmm? Where did you put this? So string at how is how is at hello? We passed it. In, we passed hello in in this. Oh. So we passed hello in. So now if I were to do um, um, good, it would print out G And to print every character string S is what this. So that, that four in string, that four in uh, string is what makes it print out on every line? Yes. Okay. okay. So now let's go on to our original problem, which is how do we, we want to return a new string, which is made up of every other character. So in other words, if I've got, if I'm giving you, if I give you hello, I want this to return uh, H L O, right? Every other character. If I give you ha 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 ha, I want it to return H H H H, right? Make sense? Every other character. So how do we do this? Well, this is one. So there's a couple of common problems. I'll go over the other one, which is, um, let's public stat. I'll do another one. I'm just putting this as a reminder here. Average. Um, or sorry. Actually, let's see. I'll do another one. Actually, I'll call this one uh, count A's. So we'll get to that one in a bit. Return zero. I'm just reminding myself that that's what I want to do the next pro as the next problem. Okay, public stack string every other character, string s. All right. So here we want to again go through every single character in the uh, in the problem, and what we're going to use is what we call this is what we call like a collection problem. We're basically collecting everything into a single output. Our output's going to be a string, so let's go ahead and create a variable to represent that. String output is equal to well, we don't know, we don't have anything to put in our empty in, in as the output yet, so I'm just going to put the empty string there. And when I'm done, I'm going to return the output. Everybody see how this is like a good starting point for us? We don't have an answer yet, but our answer is going to go in output. Okay, and then we're going to give output back to the user. Make sense? So. Um, if I want to get through every other character in the string, well, let's just go ahead and go through every character first, okay? Let's just go ahead and give him back every character rather than just every other character. Okay, we'll start there, and then we'll go to a harder, and then we'll go to the every other character. So let's, so if I remember, let's remember how to iterate through this. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than s dot length, i plus plus, so that gives me all the i's that are, so if i is equal to zero, so sorry, so if the word is uh, hello, this will be the indices zero through four. Now to get any single, to get this, the character at that specific location, at that specific index, I go s dot car at, this is making sense to everybody? To get the character at this specific location, I'm going to go uh, at index i, I just do S dot car at i. Okay? Now the question is, how do I get this into my output? Any any suggestions? Yep. You could do um, return char. Well, if I were to do return here, first off, I'd be returning a character, which is not a string. The other thing is that I would be getting a, um, is that once you hit a return, the function stops immediately. So we want to add it to our output. So how can we add it to our output? This single character to our output. We can concatenate it. So plus equals, so output is equal to output, the current output we have, plus the character. 
So now let's go ahead and go back over here. Um, System dot out the print line, my module dot. Um, every other character of L O L O L O L. Okay. And this is going to just simply print out L O L O. It's going to return L O L O L O L O L. Right. How do we know it's working? That that it got passed through. Let's go ahead and do. Um, let's go ahead and just do this just to make sure see that things are happening s is equal to s dot to lowercase tricky a uh, nice little thing there you can turn a string to lowercase and now if I run this again it's gonna be lol lol as opposed to lol lol right so we can just comment that out but we see that it's effective so now how do I do every other character as opposed to every character what can I change in this for loop declaration there's lots of different ways to do this. <coughs> Any suggestions? Instead of doing every character, I want to do every other character. Which is, yes? Can you do i plus 2? Yep, I can change this increment to whatever I want. I mentioned that on Tuesday, which is, of course, forever ago. Also, didn't the quiz that we took call for something similar to that? Yep. Yeah. L L L L L. Well, it said something similar, but you could have done it with a with a nested loop. Okay. So, let's see. Um, for our last problem. Actually, yeah, I think we can stop here, um, and then I'll go over your specific solutions with your uh, with the with the for loop quiz for you. But anyway, this is a this I think is a good stopping point for right now. So I think you've got a good opportunity now to work on your for loop problems. Okay, and I'll go ahead and go over this problem with you guys uh, on one on one. Okay. What problem? Well, okay, right. Unless you want me to do it on the board right here for all of you at once. I think you can go ahead. So, can what? Yeah. Right. I know. I told you guys to turn it in. I was gonna go over your answers with you and tell you how to get yeah, to, get to yeah, the right solution. The okay. So go ahead and work on this. And again, coding that is a great place to pra uh, practice sure. these. So let me just give you a quick uh, demo of how that works. Right. Uh, Given an integer n, so sorry. So basically, it gives you a problem like this one, with some inputs. Right, it's a method over here. It doesn't have the static, but whatever. And it tells you here's what what we want it to do. Okay, make sure it works for the different things. Like here, return the absolute difference between n and 21. Except return double the absolute difference if it's over 21. So difference between 21 and nine and 19 is two. The difference between uh, 21 and 10 is 11. The difference between 21 and 21 is 0. But to return double the, du the absolute difference if n is over 21. So let's just go ahead and see. So return 21 minus n, right? We do that. We run it and it tells me different test cases, right? Where it expected, right? If I put in 19, I got 2 back. That's good. I put in 10. If I put in 10, I get 11 back, and that's what it did. But here it was expect. I put in 21, and it wanted 2 back, and I get negative 1 back. So it says return the absolute diff uh, the absolute difference. So it wants the absolute value. This one's a bit. Im this one's. Um. So. So you can do these things, like difference between 50, uh, 21 and 50 is 58. And see how my got negative 29, and they wanted 20, uh, 58. So see how they want they wanted was twice this value, and positive. All right, so there's a lot of different here, things here with some sleep in. So some basic stuff that you can code on. These are... Some kind of these are the types of problems that that you would uh, expect on I think the exam. Um, 
as far as the exam, again, that's I've got it tentatively scheduled for next uh, for next week on Thursday. Um, I'm going to the first thing I'm going about to do as soon as I stop recording is I'm going to post this practice exam, okay? Um, which is 105 points, okay? It is. Uh, I give um, a bunch of stuff on the back that describe the exam. Sorry, I'm back on the second page that describe the exam. Like, and I've got some basic com uh, things from our first lecture here about the history. Um, then 10 pre these 10 problems on, on evaluating expressions, uh, then evaluating Boolean expressions, writing some if basic if statements, evaluating iterative statements, so evaluating loops, which, by the way, should probably be the, which will probably be the focus of your of, of everything you need for the exam. Uh, following the program, following the input outputs, right? And um, if you can do this practice exam, you're probably going to do fine on the actual exam. It's a good substitute for it. What side is first? Uh, the homework. But the practice of the exam is there for you to print out and try your on your own. Okay, so let me go ahead and upload it. Okay, um, stop. 